Okay, uh, welcome to uh, Long Flat Bottom uh, Gallery and, and uh, Workshop. Uh, it's here that I've um, carved the Pākehā Popo for the uh, Te Ahu Centre in Kaitaia. Now, uh, it's a little bit, it's been a bit tricky. The, the, the first thing to remember is that it's a Popo. A, a Popo is a uh, Maori concept and it's uh, generally includes a genealogical line uh, from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top, whichever way it is designed. In this carving I have taken as our genealogical roots the uh, Ionic column from uh, Greece. Um, this is, is iconic uh, in the European uh, tradition. Uh, it's outside all our churches, outside all our public buildings. It's uh, very much a familiar part of uh, Pākehā culture. And as a genealogical line, I've, uh, this flute here is the English rose. This one here is the Irish shamrock. And this one here is the Scottish thistle. Those go right the way to the top of the um, popo and divide it into different areas. Now those areas uh, follow a timeline roughly. Um, they begin with this first panel down here which uh, includes the ships and the science that brought Pākehā to New Zealand, including Spanish galleons that wrecked on the Kuiper host coast, um, Abel Tasman's ship, James Cook's ship, and the scientific equipment and knowledge that brought him here and got him home. That includes the Harrison clock and the sextant and, of course, the compass. This side of the carving uh, is the economic reason for the initial settling of New Zealand and that was whaling. Whaling was uh, critical to the genesis of New Zealand. It brought Europeans to the coasts of New Zealand. Coastal New Zealand was settled First, really, by whalers, but that was fo closely followed by uh, missionaries. Uh, one of the first was the, the first was in uh, the Bay of Islands, and it was from the Bay of Islands that the first missionaries came to Kaitaia. That first missionary was a gentleman by the name of uh, Joseph Matthews. Joseph Matthews. Um, arrived in Kaitaia in 1834. He was followed a little while later by his associate, uh, William Pucky. Matthews was the theologian and Pucky was the man of practical skills. On the arrival of Matthews into Kaitaia, at a place called Tiahu, which is the name of our centre, he was met, um, captured, uh, introduced. It's a little fairly um, moving story uh, by Panakario, uh, who was the leader of the local tribes. The stories are sort of various. Some say that Panakario was going to boil Matthews in a pot. Um, some say that Matthews arrived on the hill and, and um, said, this is where my mission will be. This is, this is the place of my dreams. However it happened, I'm sure Panakario was deeply involved in it and was... Um, highly politically motivated 
in his actions towards the uh, missionaries because within a very short time, Joseph Matthews had a 600-acre farm, permission to proselytise the north. He'd saved the Opodi people who were under threat from Panakario's warriors. Only 14 of them left. And uh, there was the chance that Panakario and his warriors were going to go up and, and finish off the last. Panakario is, has his wife here with him, um, and that's Erianora Ati. Erianora was influential in the district. Um, both she and, and uh, Panakario signed the Treaty of Hobson. Uh, Pucky, who'd lived in New Zealand um, most of his life, I, I believe, I think all of his life, he was born here. Um, Pucky translated the uh, treaty for local Maori in Kaitaia when it came to Kaitaia for consultation. And both Erianora and Panakairio signed that um, treaty. Also, Victoria Valley, the story says that Victoria Valley was named after Erianora, but it's more, it, from what I have been able to gather, she wandered from the church and for many years, and but then returned on a deathbed. She cried out, "Victory, victory!" She is such that she returned to the Lord, and that's where the name Victoria Valley comes from. Um, with the signing of the treaty, people started flooding in. This was a the treaty was a signal to Europeans that that he was a a country. A land, an empty land, theoretically, of, uh, that was ready for a, a huge influx of people. So they arrived in their big numbers. One of the things that brought them to the far north was the famous uh, Sabritsky's um, schooner, the Greyhound. The Greyhound was famous in the north and was one of the uh, main means of transport in the early days, both for passengers and for cargo. On the other side here, once the mission had been established, uh, industry was just amazing. The, the early settlers worked and worked and worked, and they built and built and built, and they cleared timber at a massive rate. Everything was by hand. Down below you'll see a picture of puckies. Famous land yacht. Pucky built a hospital in Kakao, and to get there quickly, he would take his cart to 90 Mile Beach from Kaitaia and un unhitch his horses and put up a sail and sail to the bluff where he'd ride inland again. Quite a uh, canny man. Here, are the, uh, here is a picture of a, um, a surveyor at work. New Zealand was unique in that it was the only work, uh, country in the world that was settled after it was surveyed. So the first Europeans to see most of New Zealand were in fact surveyors. Access was always a big problem for the far, the far north Pākehā society. And this here represents the opening of the road across the Mangamukas, which was um, pretty harem scarem. Um, for many years, the main road went around through Herakino, and the um, the making of the road across uh, the Mangamukas was quite significant. Here we have a picture of uh, my genetic connection to the um, Popo. Uh, this is the MV motor vessel Anglia, which brought the cable to the um, wireless cable to uh, Cable Bay and connected New Zealand to the world for the first time. My grandfather was the bosun on this ship, and uh, I'd always known about it, but when I've done some reading recently, it's uh, brought it home to me quite how familiar he was with this area. I came here 35 years ago, so it was quite by coincidence. 
this is a picture of um, the main street of Kaitai as it developed. This is in approximately 1926. We'll move on to the top of the uh, other Po at this stage. <laughs> 